Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with baked mushroom risotto. That's right, I'm showing you an alternative version for a recipe I've never even shown you the regular version for. Yes, that is a little strange, but I will explain that on the blog post. The good news, however, is that once you try this method, it is so easy and the rice comes out so perfect, you may not even care anymore about the classical method. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by cutting up a few cups of mushrooms. I'm going to dice mine. You can cut these any way you want. And I'm using the brown cremini mushrooms. The white button mushrooms will work exactly the same. They're the same mushroom, basically. One's grown in the light, one's grown in the dark. Once those are cut, we're going to throw them in a large skillet that's placed over medium-high heat with a bunch of melted butter in there. And we're going to saute those until browned. And I should mention at this point, for this to work exactly as shown, you're going to need a 12 or 13 inch saute pan. That's a very standard size. Needs to be oven proof, of course. And you know the deal with mushrooms. We're going to add a pinch of salt. And then as we like to say, first we make them wet, then we make them dry, then we make them wet again. So we're going to use that same method here. The salt's going to dry out the liquid. They're going to kind of boil in their own juices. But then when that evaporates, they're going to start frying in that butter. The only thing that evaporates out of a sautéing pan of food is water vapor. Fat does not evaporate. So whatever butter or oil you start with is going to remain in the pan. I'm also going to season that up a little bit with some black pepper and a little shake of cayenne. And we're going to keep sautéing those until they're nicely browned. Something like that which at that point we're gonna add a half an onion that I've finely diced. We can turn the heat down to medium at that point, and we're just gonna sweat those onions with those mushrooms for another few minutes until the onions turn translucent and soften a little bit. And when that happens, we're gonna go ahead and dump in our rice. Speaking of which, here it is. I'm using carnaroli, which is a famous variety of rice for risotto. It's actually called the king of rices, and it's very similar to arborio, which is the most popular rice for risotto, which should work for this, by the way, although I've never tested it because I only use carnaroli for my risotto. And you should be able to find that at the same fancy stores that sell the arborio rice. And if not, you can certainly find it online quite easily. But anyway, that's something else you can read a little more about on Food Wishes. So we're gonna take a cup of that. We're gonna dump it in our saute pan. All right, we're still on medium heat. And we're going to stir that for about a minute until every single grain of rice is coated with some of that fat. We're also going to want to stir some salt in at this point. And when you're positive every single grain is coated, we can start adding our liquids. So I'm going to pour in one cup of chicken broth, which can cause your eyeballs to steam up. So be careful. All right, you plant munchers can definitely use vegetable stock if you want. Totally will work. We're going to raise the heat up to medium high. And we're simply going to cook stirring until that liquid is absorbed. So basically the beginning and the ending of this recipe are the same as traditional risotto, but what's so different is the middle 15 minutes. We're going to do that in the oven in an attempt to eliminate as many variables as possible. So keep stirring, keep cooking, and when all the liquid has been absorbed and you can't see any at the bottom of the pan, we're going to go ahead and dump in a second cup of broth. And with the second cup of stock, all we're going to do is wait for it to come back to a simmer and we're going to pop it in the oven. By the way, at this point, make sure your oven is already preheated to 400 degrees. Very important, make sure it's hot before you start this. So we're going to go ahead and stir that cup in. By the way, make sure there's no grain stuck to the sides, otherwise those won't cook. And as soon as you see that bubbling, as soon as it just starts to simmer, you're going to pop it in the oven for exactly 15 minutes at 400 degrees. And after 15 minutes, it should look like this. And by the way, quick tip, make sure you always put a towel over the handle of a pan that just came out of the oven so everyone knows it's hot, right? Because we're going to work with this on the stovetop. That would be really easy to grab. So be careful. And at this point, we're going to test it with a fork. And you can see those grains are already looking amazing. And they're not going to be cooked all the way through. They're going to probably be 85 to 90% cooked, which is perfect because the last step is finishing this with some more cream and stock. I'm also tasting for salt here, which is why you see me add a pinch. So at that point, I'm going to measure out one half cup of heavy cream plus another half cup of chicken broth. We're going to go ahead and dump that into our pan. We're going to turn the heat on to medium, and we're going to finish this just like a regular risotto. So we're going to cook on medium, stirring constantly until the rice reaches your ideal level of doneness. And that's only going to take you a few minutes. And just like regular risotto, as you stir... The starch from the outside of the grain attaches itself to the liquid in the pan and creates that signature creamy, luscious sauce. And of course, at this point, you're going to have to step up and be the boss of your risotto. You're going to have to decide how much longer to cook this. You're also going to decide how saucy or soupy you want it. I do not like my risotto too runny, but some people do. And you could easily, easily add another half cup of liquid here. But I have a very specific texture I'm going for, and I'll show you at the end when I plate it. So for me, it was at this point when I said that risotto is done. It should be cooked through where there's no raw starch in the grain, yet it should stay firm and fairly toothsome. Kind of the same idea as al dente pasta. 
And when that happens, you're done almost. So we're gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna finish it with a little extra drizzle of cream. I'm gonna toss in a nice handful of Parmigiano Reggiano and some fresh chives. And once that's stirred in, and you've given it a final taste for seasoning, it's time to plate up immediately. In fact, why am I still stirring? Come on, plate up. So I'm gonna spoon that onto some nice warm plates. And then I'm gonna show you how you can tell if you have a nice risotto consistency. Once you pile it on the plates, if you give the plate a shake, it will settle down and flatten out. If you shake the plate and it doesn't settle down like that, it may have been a little too dry. And of course, conversely, if it flattens out as soon as you spoon it on, it may have been a little too loose. But again, that's up to you. But whether you like yours a little tighter or a little looser, what will be true using this method is that every single one of those grains of rice will be perfectly cooked. They will all be separate but equally delicious. And yes, that was a reference to the famous court case, Brown Rice versus Board of Education. And the most fun part about this recipe is inviting over your most hardcore Italian food snob friend and making this for them. You know the one, drives a Fiat, lots of product in the hair. And they're going to want to hate it, but they won't be able to because it's so unhateable. Great texture, great taste. There's nothing not to like. So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.